Welcome everyone to this video where I'm going to show you guys Jinxie's best supportive teammates. I'm going to leave it to only supportive because I cannot show the DPS or the characters. That's because I don't know Jinxie's DPS. Um, I need to, I like to get my hands on the character and actually play with them in-game to really see what a, a character can do in-game to really be able to tell the DPS. I'm sure there's a way I can do it right now, but uh, it's, it's just I find it to be a little bit too much work and uh, it's so much easier if I just wait for the character to come out and really start cooking there so you're gonna use a sub dps such as yinlin um or teffy and or the blue guy the blue lightning punching guy you know i don't have calculations for those because they don't enhance their numbers i can show you the numbers of these characters and uh, most most teams are going to have one of these characters in it so it, it's not like it's going to be a complete useless video for everyone here's going to be the stats i'm going to use on my gen c and here's the Here's what 135 crit value looks like. This is what I'm going to be using. You'll see that it's really average crit value. You, know, you have one crit roll and everything. And then first up is Spectral Rover. Spectral Rover is going to reduce the enemy's resist, uh, spectral resistance by 10. Give us 22.5% attack and 12% damage bonus from the Heron. The four cost bird. You're going to stop on her. This is going to be a roughly 30% damage increase global. So when I say global, I mean it's going to affect everything from her basic attacks, her skill, ultimate, heavy attack, even your echo, right? Everything is going to get this 30% damage buff. So that's pretty good in my opinion. And the way I got this number is um, if you look at the normal, normal calculation here, you take my motion value of all four basic attacks, which I just basically smushed together into a big one number. I That went through a crit multiplier. This is Our enemy's defense is going to chop off half our damage. Then this is going to be multiplied by our damage bonus. And then we are going to do 90% damage because 10% of it is being resisted by the enemy. This resistance right here, you don't have to worry about on Spectre Rover because we're getting rid of that. And also our attack is being increased because of Moon Cloud. And our damage bonus is being increased because of Heron. Leading to a 30% damage increase on auto attacks, uh, skill, alt, heavy attack, echo, everything. 30% right? everything. Very good. I'm gonna call this girl Kung Fu Panda because I don't know her actual name. And uh, let's say she she's gonna give a 38% um, ult deepen. And if you look at deepen here or the ult, the deepen shows up all the way to the end here, meaning it is multiplicative with everything else. So that's a 61% uh, damage increase on only the ultimate. And it also shows us, shows us uh, how good the 10% or 12% damage bonus from Heron and 22.5% attack is uh, from those other two. It's going to lead to a roughly 17% increase globally. Everything's getting 17% increased damage. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good, man. But um, alt damage on Gen C, not that great though. But a 17% global for really just running two things is nice. Tao Chi's in the same boat as Kung Fu Panda because instead of buffing alt, she's buffing skill. But um, Jin C uses a lot of skills. I mean, a lot. Her auto attacks in the enhanced state are considered skills. She has four skills that all do a... F eh, I won't say all, but two of them do a buttload of damage. And yeah, she's just a really heavy skill dealer, skill damage dealer. And then yeah, just another 17% on basics and alt. By G, she's I'm going to say that she is a conditional damage buff. <laughs> the only thing that is unconditional of her is the rejuvenating tides. Which you will always be able to get because you're going to always heal. But the other 15% inherent skill attack and the 15% damage deepen, that is not, um, that's not like, that's not something that you will always get because you need to run over the little thing on the ground to get this attack and you need to have Jin C come after Baiji for this deepen. So if you're going to run Baiji with another buffer, it's almost impossible to get this deepen off. But in the, in the event that Baiji will be your only buffer and you're playing a sub deepen as well, We'll be able to get this, all these buffs on her so that's why i'm going to go ahead and calculate for just that person who will use baiji as their only damage buffer and you'll see that we're getting a roughly 40 percent damage increase globally everything is getting this very good for a four cost character i cannot lie but it's only this good if you can get all these buffs i mean if you just miss the deep in alone you're losing a hefty load of this damage buff when we look at Verena, we all know she's broken, but the only difference between Verena and Baiji is 5% more attack on the Inherent, and it's also way less unconditional. Like, all this damage here is guaranteed, you don't have to do anything for it. 
you just play the game and normally with Verena you'll get his buff, but we all know Verena's broken. And you can see um she's increasing her damage numbers significantly. But one thing to note is that Verena is also Spectro, the same element as Gen C. If you know how Gen C works, you'll know that you cannot use the same element to stack up her incandescence. So a little less synergy with uh Verena. Almost like they shadow nerfed it, kinda kinda made the Verena not so good with her. And to summarize everything up, we have Tauchi giving a 17% global with a 6% skill buff, but she's not that playable. And I completely understand why no one would want to play her. I'm on the fence of playing her too. Like I was kind of a diehard Tauchi player or fan, but um, I'm getting some second guesses, man. She does not look that playable. Spectral Rover, once you can get her to S6, is going to be demonic, giving us 30% damage to everything. And she will act like a healer as well. Very good option here. And it's free to play as well. Kung Fu Panda um, is sitting in the same boat as Tauchi, but she can act as a healer and a shielder. But only buffing your ult by with a deepen is, I don't know if that's something to write off about. Baiji, very good as well, but she needs to be your only source of damage buffing. Otherwise, you will not be able to use the other character properly. Or if you are going to play another sub DPS, um, that sub DPS cannot, will not be getting any of Baiji's buffs. Because, or I wouldn't say all, but she will not be getting the deepen at least for Baiji. Because she works on a, the, um, the next Resonator gets the buff, not the whole team. And then Verena, I don't have anything to say about Verena. We know how Verena works. This is just, um, this video was made just to give you guys some insight on um, how good these characters are going to pair with Gen C. If you know how good your sub DPSs are, like if you want to play Yanwu, you want to play Yinlin or Mortefi, just know these characters are all also going to be very great. And also remember that it's a single player anime game, you'll be able to clear every content with uh, any set of these characters on screen with any sub DPS or any two of these or any two sub DPS. I'm sure it will never be that bad ever. Um, with that being said, I'm going to log out this video. I hope it was informative in some way, shape or form. And yeah, peace out.